Good afternoon, YouTube. Welcome to Taming the Tamaskin. So today we're going to talk about the Northern Inuit and the Tamaskin, and how they differ and how they're similar. So the Northern Inuit, uh, its origins are pretty unknown for the most part. Uh, there's two primary stories that I'm really not going to go into because uh, nobody really knows if either is actually true or not. I'm more going to focus on what Northern Inuits have turned into today. So the primary mixes of a Northern Inuit really kind of stem between uh, Malamutes, uh, Siberian Huskies, and Alaskan Huskies, and German Shepherd. Um, they selectively bred them together uh, to basically bring out all of the wolf attributes of each of the breeds. And with that, you get a very, very beautiful looking dog that has a lot of wolf-like characteristics without any actual wolf dog. And that's the primary thing that sets Northern Inuits apart from Tamaskins, is the wolf dog content. Tamaskins, as you know, on the TDR side especially, can allow up to 30% wolf content. The average for the breed right now is about 15%. With a 15% wolf content on the average to the through the breed, it really means that you can end up with some wolf wolfy like uh, attitudes, and um, you know the dogs can be more shy. And even a small content or low content wolf dog can have some undesirable um, wolf like traits, which that could be a a huge downside to many people that are really just looking for a good dog that's easy to train. Northern Inuits fit this I think better than Tamaskins because they look like the wolf but they have no wolf content or ancestry and that means that they are easy to train and, and a lot of that is the reason why Game of Thrones chose the Northern Inuits uh, as their uh, dire wolves because they were easy to train, they can bring them on set, they weren't nervous with people. Even Taylor here in large crowds of people, she, you know, early on she would tuck her tail, she'd raise her fur, she, she'd she want a flight, she she would want to run away. And that's a very wolf-like characteristics where she, she was just not okay. It took us a long time, lots of training, lots of uh, positive motivation and, and whatnot, and working with her to get her to where I can walk into Barnes & Noble now and we can have a group of kids run up to Tayla and just jump all over her and she doesn't care. So these are a lot of things that the, the Northern Inuit, I think their goal early on was the same as the Tamaskins. They both wanted, you know, the, the wolf without the wolf. They just took two very different paths to get there. Tamaskins took the path of adding wolf into the mix to breed in the best looking characteristics uh, physically of the wolf dogs. And they selectively bred in uh, wolf dog that was uh, trainable and had good personality traits and uh, that was carefully and selectively done for a lot of years and still is done uh, to this day there are still wolf outcrossings wolf dog outcrossings with the Tamaskin line and that's very important to their genetics and why the Tamaskin's genetic diversity is really awesome the northern Inuits on the other hand uh, they stuck to breeding all dogs together so our earlier mentioned dogs that were all mixed in are very similar to Tamaskin's except that they don't have the wolf content and they have focused on breeding only dogs. And even now with their off crossings, they're concentrating on other dog breeds to breed in to uh, continue the wolf-like traits while diversifying their genetics. And um, those are two very different looks uh, or two di different ways of creating a wolf-like dog. Uh, and they've both been successful. And that's, that shows in the Northern Inuit's attitudes, uh, trainability, and uh, even their, their success in TV. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine trying to bring a wolf onto the set of Game of Thrones. Now, Taylor here, well, you know, she's pretty tired. We had a pretty long day. We, we hiked a good solid five and a half miles of some pretty hard stuff that I was uh, uh, probably not quite ready for myself. But um, So she's exhausted, but we spent all day hiking. And this is another important thing about both these breeds. These are high energy breeds. You really need to look at your lifestyle and uh, what, what kind of dog fits into that. Uh, either of these breeds uh, you will need to exercise with vigorously 
uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Um, you know, I, I try to do some hard hiking and uh, walks and, and play time uh, at least uh, more than a few times a week. So uh, hard play. And then the rest of the time we just do some walks and stuff and it gets us by. Um, but yeah, if you live, you know, say an apartment or something like that and you're, you know, you work long hours and, you know, you can't afford doggy daycare or anything like that, then, uh, it's probably not the right time in your life. And it's not to say that later in, in your life that it won't be the right time, but, uh, it's important for dogs and, and how we're going to take care of them as to what your lifestyle is. And if you're prepared for that, um, both of these breeds, uh, require lots of training, uh, just because, because Northern Inuits don't have uh, any wolf content does not mean that they are not or they that they are an easy to train dog or that they don't need training uh, all dogs need training of course but uh, both of these are high energy smart dogs uh, any intelligent dog is just naturally a lot more of a challenge it seems to to train them and get them to listen just because they think they know better um, that's very true of Taylor here uh, she's very very stubborn um, and, and early on getting her to recall took took lots of uh, chicken nuggets from McDonald's <laughs> but um, it's very important to remember that you know no matter what the dog or whatever else you gotta look at your, your act, active level how much training you want to put in uh, what what frustrations can you handle uh, while training your dog um, you know early on there was a lot of frustrations with Taylor in in trying to get her to learn certain things and now we don't have those issues because we've trained them out and that's very important to me I, i've worked very very hard for that so as we look at both the northern inuit and uh the, the tamaskin uh they're very similar um, a zero percent tamaskin could be very similar to a northern inuit and the thing i have there though is that even a tamaskin that may test in an embark test with zero percent chances are the ancestry is still very close with wolf dog um i, I don't think embark tests are always 100 percent it it always seems like the females will tend to test for zero or closer to, to zero than the males do and uh, the way that they test and the phenotype that they test isn't 100 percent accurate it just can't be uh, unless you dive a lot deeper into testing their genetics which is, would be very expensive so they don't do so sometimes um an embark test isn't 100% positive. So in that, you know, when you're looking at, do I get a Tamaskin or do I get a Northern Inuit? Um, if you're not ready for some of the behavioral challenges that could come with a low content wolf dog, then uh, I would say go with the Northern Inuit. And uh, both dogs I think are amazing though. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, they both are very friendly with families. They do very well with kids. Uh, Taylor here, uh, she loves, she, loves, uh, she loves my daughter pretty much more than anything in the whole world. So, uh, and, and all kids, for that fact of the matter. Uh, Taylor is very gentle around kids. Um, if we're talking size and weight, uh, both the, the Northern Inuit and Tamaskans, uh, they weigh about the same. So you're looking at between, um, I, I think it's like 65 to 110 pounds is about the range that you're looking at. And um, that, that means that, you know, Taylor here is right at 100 pounds. So they're, they're big dogs. Um, so another important thing to look at. And Tamaskins and Northern Inuits, because their genetics are relatively similar, their sizes are very similar as well. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Uh, we just talked a little bit about the Northern Inuit and the Tamaskin. Which would you rather have? Would you rather have the Tamaskin or the Northern Inuit? Uh, comment, throw your comment down in, in down below and let me know uh, what you would prefer and why. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.